Hey, how you all going? It's Jai, that Aussie metal guy here with Crank.com. And today I'm having a chat with Riley Rowe, vocalist for LA-based prog metalcore band King Shame. I had the NSFW there, dude. I didn't want to put it in because, you know, you don't put it in with every fucking hip-hop band you hear these days or anything else as well, dude. I guess so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, recently, you released your societal sex EP um, back in 2019, so... Very cheers for um very pleased to have a chat with you tonight, man. Cheers, mate. Thank you, thank you. As I get out the coffee, bro, I've had about four coffees this morning and done the kid run. So um, yeah, it's Ooh. coming up on lunchtime, dude. So all this caffeine okay, bursting right. through my system and a whole lot of kink shame, and man, makes for a very, very cool morning. <laughs> Good, good. <laughs> can, can I ask um how you originally got into vocals and, and singing work, mate? Um, yeah, I mean, I would say my inspiration for vocals goes back to like, um, like in middle school and high school, I was really into like the, the grunge genre. And I think there was a lot of like big vocal powerhouses in that scene. Um, like Eddie Vedder in, in Pearl Jam or Chris Cornell Soundgarden, um, Lane Staley and Allison Chains. They were all just such powerful, um, vocalists i mean of course my my vocal style is is not like theirs um we're more like deathcore vocals i suppose um but I, as i got it, uh, more into metal um i you know i i started to uh try and uh sing along with these songs and uh you know maybe it's a stroke of ego but I, you know it's i think it's very empowering to be a vocalist or a front man and um it's fun being up in the center of the stage and uh i, th I think right Oh, something happened there. Hold up, I'll pause. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the fun of doing international ones. I'm like, it wasn't me this time. <laughs> I can't blame the Australian government now. Shitty internet. <laughs> That's true. They're all watching. Um, I'm sorry. Where did I? Where did I cut off? Uh, you were talking about being a front man and that kind of inspiring you. And um, I want to before we go further, I want to talk about grunge because this has come up a lot, man. I've talked to a lot of bands, and for me. I'm gonna. I'm 40. I'm putting it out here. Okay. So when Pearl Jam and Alice in Chains and Soundgarden, that was my my thing. I had my wall was plastered. I'm gonna say it. I had Nirvana posters. I uh -huh. had um, Pearl Jam posters, Soundgarden, nice. and Pamela Anderson. That was my generation. <laughs> Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Look man. Look I respect it. Grunge was kind of what um, kind of built a lot of my roots and led on from there as well into heavy metal, dude. And, yeah, um, yeah. You know, I can kind of get that whole idea. And for, for you, I kind of see that um, the visuals are very important to you as well. The visuals of music and, you know, bands, I can kind of see that's a big part of you, the art and the visuals of music as well. Yeah, I, I mean, qu quite the opposite of grunge. I think grunge was, I mean, they had their look, but I yeah. don't think they were very, like, visually uh, appealing. <laughs> um, they were just, like, dirty guys. Because um, after that, I would tour kind of come in. There, what's that? From after that, I think kind of tool, wouldn't it be, was kind of that era and those kind of bands that kind of started popping up, eh? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the 90s and early 2000s was an explosion of um, just so many different subgenres. So I think from grunge, I went to uh, like progressive metal and industrial metal and new metal. So yeah, I would say bands like um, Tool or Ramstein or Nine Inch Nails or Marilyn Manson, super visually provocative. And, and I, I loved all those acts. They were... Um, I mean, musically pushing the envelope, but visually as well, like, like your mom didn't want to buy those CDs for you, you know? Yeah, and it, <laughs> like, was, it was, yeah, the film some, clips were cool creepy too. Stuff. Yeah, and the film clips you put them on, you'd thank have to you, track them you. down back, back once upon a time when you'd go watch film clips on, 
I think MTV used to play film clips once upon a time back over in your side of the world as well. Over here, we had Rage and you'd have to stop yeah. really late at night to kind of catch clips from those heavier bands and then put them in an hour-long session or something like that, eh? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, it was a little bit before my time. I mean, I was born... Uh, 1995 so oh, wow. I mean my passion for the grunge bands or like those early uh, 2000s and uh, late 90s bands um, I was kind of catching up I mean catching up. I, I feel like most people my age what's up catching up uh, I, I think yeah 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 I, I think most people my age um, don't really like connect with those bands as much as I do. I think there's a lot of people that were like in the the emo scene, like Mike Kimball Groymance and Blink Me Too. Um, that's what I see like um, with kids my age who are in the metal scene are like, oh, like Fall Out Boy was like what I grew up on. And I'm like, I, I never had that phase. Like my phase was like the grunge and uh, I guess some new metal and some prog and industrial. Um, but yeah, I was listening to, I, I guess, music a little bit before me with that. Yeah, well, it's cool. I've chatted to a few bands, like um, uh, some of these younger bands. I remember chatting to a band called Collateral Damage, a young up and coming punk band. And they were saying they were listening to Nirvana. And then I chatted to another young lad. He was like a young guitar prodigy. And he was saying that he would be listening to Nirvana. It's kind of cool for me to listen to people say, look, now we're going back into this grunge era and having a listen to that you know and it, it is kind of fun for me to hear that kind of things from bands and oh that must have um, really evolved really quick and really fast though for you from diving into that grunge period then moving on to kind of that new metal and that industrial sound because that's kind of when <laughs> things started getting torn up into different genres i suppose kind of around that real bad around that era yeah i i mean th there's just so many crazy different uh, paths to go down uh, in metal. Um, I think the hardest leap for me was being into like the new metal scene and jumping to like metalcore and deathcore and death metal. I had a friend who showed me that stuff and I was like, this stuff is intense. Like, I, I, I mean, there's some intense music in new metal, um, but jumping, making that leap to like, just the gutturals and the blast beats all the time um, was a bit alarming, uh, but but in a good way. Like yeah. it was, it was definitely a bit of a revelation. I was like, damn, this this shit can go way harder than I thought. And it's a slippery slope from there, isn't it, man? And it goes really yeah. quick. Yeah, and together. then <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, I mean, I I still like love my roots in in grunge. And I'll still occasionally listen to it, but I think the majority of stuff, um, I just keep like expanding my my musical palette um, to to just enjoy new new uh, kinds of metal. Um, I think right now I'm into finding metal from all all sides of the world, um, like India and Ukraine. Um, you know, Asia, South America, Africa. Um, I think it's fascinating where it's like, uh, you always assume your, your music is like in the Western world, but it's like, no, oh, there's all these crazy metal scenes um, all around the world and they're, they're doing different things. And uh, I hope everyone can, can discover that too. Yeah, well, you um, do some work with as the Metal Has No Borders website. So I've had a little bit yeah. of a look. I had, let's have a little bit of a look at some of the other stuff you do as well. I will jump into King Shamer. I do go off a little bit off topic. But um, since we're talking about it, you do work with Metal Has No Borders and you're also in the industry. You do reviews and talk to pretty cool people as well. It, it's amazing like, how much music and heavy metal is out there and it must blow your mind. You see it firsthand, how much great music is all over the world. It's impossible to keep up with it at times, eh? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I started, uh, it's funny being on this side of the uh, <laughs> yeah. interview table because <laughs> um, I grew up uh, or like got myself in the, the metal uh, community uh, with a couple of different sites. Um, right now I'm with Metal Injection and I do yep. mostly reviews 
with them, but sometimes I've done interviews. So it's funny being interviewed myself <laughs> when normally I interview bands. Um, and then from there, I was like, oh, I, I kind of want to expand and, and make my own site. So yeah, Metal Has No Borders is my own site. Awesome. And it's dedicated uh, exclusively to metal bands that are like outside of the, the Western world. So like no American or Canadian or, or Western European bands. We're just focusing on um, those, those music uh, musicians who like don't really get the spotlight um, in Western media. Um, and it's, it's come with a lot of cool discoveries that I've found. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been fun discovering all these, these crazy bands from the other side of the world and, and what their unique twist on, on the, uh, the heavy music world is. Yeah, it's a, it's a massive, massive backyard we have in the heavy metal community and there's so many great bands. When I, you know, I, I'm a part of the community and the sites and things like that, but I think somewhat it builds into it a little bit and they're pushing, you know, the big four bands and like, oh, Slayer or Metallica. And it's like they've all had their da- day. They're great. It's, but fucking check out something else. I, I grew up as a massive Slayer and Metallica fan, but for me to just sit there and listen to three or four same metal bands over and over again, it'd probably do your head in too, Riley. And you, the, the amount of talent and quality <laughs> bands we have, like when I come across King Shamer, I got the email for you guys. I actually hadn't heard of you guys back in 2019. So for me, this was a massive joy, dude, to go, fuck, man. I love, you know, getting music like from over there in the world and not your side of the world, having to listen to King Shamer and, what you guys have got to offer, then jumping into something from Portugal or, you know, Chile or, you know, there's so much great metal out there and people should not get just hung up on the big bands that have been and check out what's coming through. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, all respect to the bands that have come before us, I think, yeah. you know, from Black Sabbath to Slipknot, they've all made an impact, but you know, if you're, if you're stuck on those bands, uh, it just kind of gets boring and, and stale and there's no progress. Um, I think, I think a band like Code Orange is, is making a big impact right now. Um, not only on in music, but they're like pushing for sure. um, uh, the, the new, new styles and, and bringing up bands from the unknown. Um, so yeah, I, I think, to a small extent, there's like some complacency in the metal world where they're just stuck on those those bands that have sold millions of records. And, and um, I, you know, I, I think there's some efforts to, to find new modern groups, but um, sometimes it's like, uh, I don't know. I, 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 hope, I hope our scene continues to discover new, new bands that are pushing the envelope um, in, in a modern way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's where sites like yours with Metal Has No Borders, people should go over, check that out. I'll chuck in a link for that. So can I ask how um, King Shamer originally began and ha- how did this idea kind of evolve into, okay, and this is what I want to do, something full on, and we're going to put our ass into this and get into gear? Yeah, I mean, to a small extent, this has kind of like been my first band. I mean, I've done, I did like the Battle of the Bands in high school and had had like some little experimental projects here and there, but this is like the first one that I um, put all my efforts into. Um, so I, yeah, I, I've always wanted to like um, go full gung ho on a band and, and I was in college um, studying music and, and I guess just being surrounded by uh, kind of creative and musical like-minded individuals is, is inspiring. Um, as for the the theme of King Shamer, uh, I guess it just kind of dawned on me uh, one day that, you know, being in many acts that have always had kind of a shock factor to them. You know, we talked about Nine Inch Nails and Marilyn Manson and Ramstein before. Um, I think they, they were always so shocking too. Um, just, I, I would say American audiences, but probably across the world, they, they were um, shocking. And I can't really say there's too many like shocking bands nowadays um, that are like, uh, yeah, I, I think shock factors is, is to a small extent dead. And I was like, I, I wanna bring that back. 
Um, so I, I thought, <laughs> uh, why not? I, of course, sex is, is such a taboo topic. Um, but like, let's push it even more. Let's find the most extreme aspects of sex and kink and BDSM and, um, you know, some of the songs we have in our EP, while humorous, it's, it's not really discussed or it's, you know, it's, um, yeah, yeah you got the good YouTube video over there, which I did watch, which is the track by track walkthrough. So if people, I'm going to put that in with this, um, when I do publish this on the website, so people can check out what each tracks about it is, as you said, it kind of is humorous, but it's kind of not, you know, as well. And then you go the shock factor these days, the bar changes. Like I did, have a listen and like I'm kind of like, oh yeah okay then but I didn't totally get shocked at first you know I don't know I've still Panther listened to them a few times as well but you know we did mention hip hop and I did say look you look at all the shit that comes out oh, shit you can tell I'm not a hip hop fan but you look at the stuff <laughs> we put on in your top ten or wherever it is in the world and you know most of it's this droll that's sold pushed by the big record companies or whatever it's got. Yeah, and it's sold by sex. It's most of it's chicks dancing up there in their bikinis or their throngs. And it's all out there in people's faces. Anyway, people just aren't discussing it. So when bands like you come across and, you know, you have that behind closed doors to, between Beauty and the Beast and bestiality, you know, the dogs and shit, you can hear them barking and that. <laughs> I was like, man, I, you know, people, it is out there. And bands like you are actually having this conversation, talking to Ramstein and been doing it for ages and, I think in the heavy metal community, it, it could be accepted a little more. And we're, we're underground for a reason. We're underground. But this shit they're sh shoving on the, the top 10 or the top 20, it's just as bad. It's not blatantly outright saying it, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I, the hip hop scene and, and talking about uh, women's bodies or, or uh, pro sex, um, uh, you know, uh, no, no slut shaming and, and all that. Uh, yeah. I, I think it has its own place. Um, uh, and uh, I think it's been normalized. And I think to an extent that's, that's totally cool. Yeah. I have nothing wrong with um, people embracing their bodies or their sex. And, and I think with King Shamer, uh, we needed to up the ante. It's, it's not just talking about sex and bodies. It's like, people fucking dogs people <laughs> fucking the elderly fucking the public you know it's it's really pushing um you know, how are we going to push people's buttons that haven't been pushed um in ages um so i i don't think the hip-hop world is disgusting or discussing reality um so that's I, I guess to a small extent that's why we talk about those themes is describing the gener generational gap is the, the track we're talking about which is showing some love for the elderly which is you know it does happen dude i've walked down the supermarket <laughs> a heap of times and seen like some 60 70 year old old dude with his 20 year old age and this is i'm nothing against him i'm like dude i wish i would have saved up some money when i was younger myself but <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i i'd imagine that's a bit more common than than bestiality but i'm yeah. sure it's out there too so um yeah, we're shining a light on on some of the more sinister aspects. Did you cop much sex. flack at all? Did anyone like try and like be negative about this at all? Because imagine you, because um, they were all pretty cool. Or well, uh, yeah, t to an extent. I mean, it was difficult um, telling my mom about the band. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, listen to this one. It, that was a difficult conversation. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I think the metal community is accepting. Um, yeah. I, I, I mean, you have slam metal bands talking, or, or you know, think about Cannibal Corpse. Their, their biggest songs are I Come Blood or <laughs> uh, what is it? Raped with a Knife? Something yeah, like yeah. that. Fucking um, with us, man. I've got, actually got my Cannibal Corpse media bag. There you go. Right. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So yeah. I, there's always been um, envelopes being pushed, and um, uh, so yeah, to to to, a, to a small extent, some people have uh, been accepting, and some people have been not so accepting. Um, yeah, I, you know, our, our first band member who who helped write a lot of the EP, uh, he I think he left because of 
uh, maybe how vulgar the content was. And, it, you know, that's fine. That's his choice. Um, but he, he can be uncomfortable, and, and I get it. But, like, you know, you look at, um, as I mentioned, Steel Panther, a uh, gangbang at the old folks' home, man. Like, tracks like this have been getting around for a while anyway. Dude. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, I don't know if we're trying to no- normalize these topics, but at least bring back uh, Factor um, and, and uh, make it a little more fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think a lot of metal bands are talking about some of the same themes that have been around for decades and I thought I'd bring a, a new side to it. Yeah, yeah. It w- would be fun too, kind of getting in the studio. Can I tell, talk about the other guys you got in the band, man? I'll chat about them and then we'll talk about the film clips. Back there really quick for more context. Um, we good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're good now. Can I come uh, on? Yeah, yeah. Right. Who are the other guys who got in the band with you as well? I've got them written down, but I'll let you shout them out. For sure, for sure. So the, when the band started, it was myself, and um, I, I told the idea to one of my classmates in college. Uh, his name is Lucas Fisher, um, and he started just um, uh, sending me all these guitar riffs, and... Um, I was like, oh, wow, this is perfect. And, and we started writing and recording in his, in his college dorm right there. He had like a little mini studio. So he did all the guitar and drum and bass for the EP. Um, and he produced it. And I came in and I was like, we should move this here and we should add samples. And um, why don't we do this kind of riff? Um, so I, I, I want to credit him for like bringing a lot to the table. Um, and, and helping with the recording and writing and producing process. Um, after some time, he, he left the band. Um, but before he left, we, we also got um, our, our bassist. Uh, we, well, we were looking for a full band so we can play a, a live show because it was just me and him and we wanted to play live shows. So we got, um, uh, we got two members from a, another band in the local scene they're from a band called Akasha. I want to say they're more like deathcore. Uh, so, uh, we got Blair from that group and Johnny from that group to jump on bass and drums respectively. Um, so that's kind of where we are. We're just a trio right now. Um, once, once Lucas left the band, because he was acting as our guitarist on the live stage, once he left, uh, we boosted Blair up from bassist to guitarist. Um, and th- that worked because she was like, oh, I, I'm more comfortable playing guitar than bass anyways. Um, so right now it's just a trio with, with uh, me on vocals, uh, Blair on bass, and Johnny on drums. Um, we're kind of looking for a bassist, but it's not like there's any rush because we're not playing live shows right now for obvious reasons anyway. But um, yeah, it's a it's a nice little group we got. Well, it'd be handy too, because like, as you said, there's no rush for live music, and you got Blair there who's um, stepped up on guitar, so they could easily play a little bit of bass anyway if it come down to recording, and then look at that at a later date, fill in the bass part. You know what I mean? If you were playing live when things settle down. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to. Uh, writing and recording more music and i'm looking forward to getting back on the stage so um yeah well we just I, I, gotta be patient that's what i figured like with the, the teasing of the film clips that, that come out now you've got the, the behind the closed doors between beauty and the beast which come out october 4th was the film clip for that one the t- the 10th was the most vulgar display and disregarding the generational gap come october 18th i, I dare say is kind of testing the waters too to see where everyone's at and kind of working towards it's like look we're still here king shame is still doing stuff and working towards maybe some music towards the end of the year or 2021 eh? yeah um i mean with uh covid and and being kind of trying to keep social distance uh uh i i tried to keep king shamer active so with the time that i had I, i created those videos um, and it's been fun dropping one each each week this month. Um, as for the future of the band, um, yeah, we're definitely planning to follow up 
the last EP with with uh, potentially another EP. Um, I've got the the themes in mind for which songs. Uh, one of them is going to be a, a cover. We're um, planning on covering the Beatles "Come Together," but like, come together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> a little, a different twist on it. The King Shame um, a twist. Yeah, yeah. Got to King Shame the Beatles. You know, <laughs> they're the classics. Um, and then right before Lucas left, we were writing a song about. Um, cucks like cuckolds and all that uh so <laughs> that one will be a fun one uh it's not complete yet but um once things chill out in the world um we'll try and get that demo back with me uh blair and and johnny and and try and finish it um it must be fun know, trying to write lyrics for king shamer it must be fun trying to write the lyrics for king shamer you must sit there sometimes going oh laughing or that you're either gonna laugh or you're gonna be like oh is that just a little too far <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a fine line between like is this too far or not um it, it was definitely there was a lot of laughing in the recording process for the last vp uh especially finding some of the samples the bones you know, I, I, I think it was the first time I uh, sat in a room with another guy and and watched porn and tried to find <laughs> <laughs> specific moans that would work for our song. So it was a, it was a new experience. First time but, um, we've porn longer than five That's what college well. is for, right? First time the porn's that- gone for longer than five minutes as well. <laughs> I suppose so. <laughs> uh, Riley, this has been a massive pleasure, man. We'll have to have another chat when the next EP comes out. Um, before I of sign course. out, here man, before are you? No, yeah, you go. We got the mask here. Hell yeah! There we go. And then That's on the cover behind us. Let's see. Let's see yeah, I've seen that one. Oh. I've seen behind you the uh, the blow up. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I know. I spotted a dude. I'm like, no, I won't. I won't. I won't mention it out, right? I'll just. <laughs> we're, we're, we're looking at each other there for a bit. <laughs> yeah, you're like, <laughs> who hey, is she? <laughs> who is she? What's her name? <laughs> uh, Riley. This um, I, I think her name is Rebecca. Cool. Uh, awesome, man. We'll sign out for the people. But before I do, do you have any last words, shout outs or thank yous you want to add in, mate? Yeah, we got um, one more music video coming this upcoming Saturday. It's the music video for um, what? Climax, Control, Control and Closure. Um, and then, yeah. And then on Halloween, we're going to, um, because e- each Saturday this month, we've done a music video for each track off the EP. So this one will be the last music video for the last song. And then on Halloween, we're going to just put them all together. And that will be on YouTube, just like a full uh, film of the EP. So you can stream that in your little Halloween party or or whatever you want. Um, But other than that, uh, that, that's we're looking forward to next year where hopefully we can get back on stage, write some more and record some more music. Uh, Riley, massive pleasure. Thank you very much. Everyone go check out King Shamer. I'll share that um, video link once it comes out. I'll put this interview up with all the other links we talked about. So, Riley, thank you very much, mate. Thank you, man. Thank you.